So there were a couple questions in class that were asking about splitting um, elements for creating uh, fire stairs which don't have a more regular uh, side to them. Um, and this can be applied to, to many things. Um, and I've showed it in the massing tutorials, but I want to show it here once again. Um, to give you an example of what I'm talking about, uh, let's say I am needing to put a stairwell here on this curved um, element. Um, and in this semester, we're not dealing with doubly curved elements. So if this is sort of, you know, being pushed out, um, that it's going to be a little bit too complex for this class. Um, it takes a lot of engineering to, to build those things. Uh, but what I would do in this instance is, one, I would set the C-plane to the top of this building. So we'll go to the C-plane tab and we'll set it to the surface. And I'm just putting the X-axis in here. It doesn't really matter which way the X and Y axis go. Um, but I can run something like an offset command. Uh, let's see, I need uh, my fire stairs to be 15 feet in width. Uh, let's run this one as well. Uh, and we can draw a line between these. Oops. And I'll join these. So now I have one curve here. Um, I can fill out this uh, element, and I can also dupe this uh, curve. So we're going to dupe edge here and try to join these. It's one closed curve. Now if I run the extrude curve command and I turn my solid on, I go to the bottom, I can run a boolean uh, Let's run a Boolean difference. I want to subtract from the main one with this new one. And then you can see that this is its own element. And I have a curved sort of split element. So if I put this on a, uh, a fire stair layer, you can see that that's where my fire stairs would be. And if I go to a top view uh, and I change this to a diagram by layer, you can see that now this is where my fire stairs would be. There's a couple other methods to do this. Let's go back here before I drew these curves. You don't have to be so precise with offsetting it and rebuilding those curves. Um, you can just build a box. Uh, I can be you know, super imprecise about this. And just move it to one of the corners. Let's rotate it here. And maybe this is what I want to split, right? I want to, I want, you know, my stairs to be here, and then maybe I exit, and this is, um, let's actually move it, move it like that, so I have a little bit of an exit. Um, now I can run this split command, and I want to split this object with this object, and then you can see that um, now it's split into uh, sort of different faces, right? This isn't a solid object anymore, but um, but I can change these to the fire stair layer. And when I, you know, go to my top view, you can see. Uh, and you could do this for, for anything, right? For a different program, or, or if you have a lobby here that you want to build. Um, you could do this with complex shapes. Um, you could do it with non-complex shapes. Um, and then you can modify these shapes afterwards as well. Um, but that's how I would do it. And if, you know, a very simple version of this is saying, you know, I have a, a 30 foot by 20 foot box that I need for a, a stairwell that's going to sort of zigzag. And I'll move this to the corner here and I'll run the uh, boolean difference command, subtracting from that with this, making sure my delete input is on no, and changing this to the fire stair layer. And now in my diagram view you can see that that's where my fire stairs would be. And that's all we need to know. And you could do this for elevators, for instance, if you want to break that down. Uh, for another stairwell here or for some other programmatic elements.